And it was at that very moment that Orange realized he'd been eating a dirty gym sock the entire time! Ew! Ew! Did I overhear someone telling a uh, creepy pasta? <laughs> no, that was just telling an actual story about me. <laughs> so you actually ate a dirty gym sock? Like, the entire thing? Are you surprised? That's not even that crazy for Orange. Yeah, earlier today he farted the ABCs, so... Enough! Listen, I thought I heard a creepy pasta in progress, and I went to all the effort of doing my creepy entrance routine. I'm on a roll. We're just gonna go with it, okay? Now, who among you is brave enough to hear my news, creepy pasta? The Funky Paw. Is this anything like the famous short story, The Monkey's Paw? No, that story isn't funky whatsoever. Gotcha. Now then, The Funky Paw is a story about a young grapefruit. Here we go. Yes, it is indeed coincidental that you are a grapefruit, and the story involves a grapefruit. Do not interrupt me again. <laughs> now then, on to my creepy pasta. Which is, as always, to die for. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a young grapefruit who cared very, very much about the way he smelled. What is happening right now? I realize it's coincidental. Now stop interrupting. <coughs> for someone without a nose, the grapefruit's sense of smell was quite refined. One day, while shopping for rare scents in a shop he had never visited before, he was offered a horrible-smelling, funky paw for purchase. The purveyor of the shop told him the paw would grant him three wishes, but there was a catch. All of his wishes would be granted in a rather funky fashion. The grapefruit purchased the paw, exited the shop, and when he looked back, the shop had vanished into a cloud of greenish gas. Nevertheless, the grapefruit rushed straight home with the paw and wished for a pile of money. It instantly appeared. The young grapefruit was overjoyed to find the paw worked. However, the pile of cash smelled rather funky. So funky, in fact, that no one would accept it as payment. No matter how much the grapefruit offered to pay, no one wanted his stinky money. And so, the grapefruit was left with a smelly pile of cash that was utterly worthless. <laughs> the grapefruit decided to make his second wish, that the woman of his dreams would fall madly in love with him. Again, the wish came true immediately. She loved him dearly and could not be convinced otherwise, no matter what. You see, the grapefruit absolutely reeked. The stench of his money had permeated everything in the surrounding area, including the grapefruit himself. No matter how many times he bathed or tried to hide it with his ridiculous collection of body sprays, the grapefruit stank to high heaven. But his love was not deterred and remained entranced by him, even though she vomited whenever he came near. Eventually, the grapefruit was at the end of his rope. He was penniless, he smelled awful, and the love of his life was vomiting far too frequently for his liking. I wish for the smell to go away, he thought to himself, before he realized he still had one wish remaining. Why, he could simply wish the smell away. And so the grapefruit took up the paw and began uttering his wish aloud, saying, I wish for the smell. But then, in the middle of his sentence, he caught a whiff of himself and vomited uncontrollably. And unfortunately for him, the paw heard his request. He had wished for the smell, and that's precisely what he got. From that day forward, the funky stench spread across the land, causing everyone who smelled it to bark loudly and comedically. The smell was so horrid that some people even barfed themselves to death and the stench of their decaying bodies somehow made the stench even worse. Everyone knew it was the grapefruit who had brought the funky curse upon them, but they did not seek retribution. To kill the grapefruit would be too kind. The true punishment was to allow him to live alongside his vomit-happy true love and his funky-smelling cash every day. 
for the rest of his natural life. The end. <laughs> now that's a creepypasta that passed the sniff test. <laughs> um, guys, where's Grapefruit? Oh, uh, I believe he went to change the radiator hose on his riding lawnmower. Yes. Checks out. I believe it. Man, that was a really good creepypasta. The way you described the smell, I could practically smell it. Actually, that wasn't the story. It was me. <laughs> Orange! Orange! What? I can't help it. I ate a gym sock. <laughs> Did someone say creepypasta? <laughs> what? Dude! No one said anything! We were all asleep! Oh, well, could someone mention creepypasta? Thank you. As a little favor to me. Let me just go get it again. Thank you. Okay, I'm ready. Go for it. Uh, creepypasta! Did someone say creepypasta? Uh, yeah. You asked us to. Well, I just so happen to have a brand new creepypasta to share with you. It's called Swimming Pool Shark. And don't worry. I promise it doesn't bite. <laughs> Excited to hear it! Sounds jawsome! <laughs> Thanks for that, Orange. Really wrecked the mood. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a young Orange who loved to swim. Like me? No, less annoying than you. Like me? Sure, why not? Anyway, this young orange was excited to learn that a new swimming pool had just opened near her home. Although the name of the swimming pool, Shark's Mouth Public Pool, concerned her. She knew it was a foolish notion, but she couldn't help but wonder if there was a shark living beneath the surface of the pool. Her parents, her friends, the lifeguard, everyone assured her that there was no shark in the pool. Finally, she came to her senses. She was being silly, so she got into the pool, which proved to be somewhat difficult because the edge of the pool was so sharp and jagged. But soon she was having a grand time playing in the water with her friends, until suddenly she spotted a fin popping up out of the water across the pool. And when she looked again, she saw it was just a backlit Dorito relaxing on a pool floaty. Relieved, that's when she noticed blood in the water. She screamed, but it turned out not to be blood at all. Her friend Ketchup Bottle had just peed in the pool again, so it wasn't quite as bad as the orange had feared. Still, everyone was asked to get out so the lifeguard could clean the pool. One by one, everyone began climbing up out of the pool. And as the orange watched her friend Muffin emerge from the water, she finally saw it. Evidence that there was a murderous pool shark on the loose. Her friend Muffin had no legs. <laughs> the pool shark must have bitten them off. The orange's friends promptly reminded her that Muffin never had any legs. None of them did, in fact. The orange realized she was being ridiculous and swam toward the sharp, jagged edge of the pool in order to climb out. But then, suddenly, the edge of the pool moved. Then it moved again. A giant whirlpool formed at the center of the pool. The unfortunate swimmers who were still in the water began getting sucked down, down into the abyss below. As the orange was carried around and around by the current, she looked up and saw what looked like gigantic teeth above her. Moments before she was sucked underneath, she realized why the pool was named the way it was. There wasn't a shark living in the pool. A gigantic shark was the pool. <laughs> They'd all been swimming inside a shark's open mouth this entire time. And now the shark was closing its jaws around them. The pool became enveloped in darkness, and one final sound echoed far and wide. Go. Well, that was a good one. It really had some teeth. <laughs> hey, where's Sis? Oh, uh, she uh, had to go receive a fax machine message. <laughs> a fax? Nobody sent one of those in like 20 years. Well, you know how long it can take a fax to come through sometimes. I mean, it's like... 
and then the paper gets jammed. You know how it is. <laughs> That's true. Well, I gotta go. Just remember, if you want to ever hear another one of my creepy pastas, all you must do in order to summon me is say the magic word, creepy pasta. Clever. <laughs> it is clever. Goodbye. So let me get this straight, creepy pasta. Every time someone says the word creepy pasta, you have to appear and tell a creepy pasta. Yes, that is correct. Good to know, creepy pasta. I'll be sure to say creepy pasta the next time I want to hear a creepy pasta. <laughs> okay, but please stop saying it. Stop saying what, creepy pasta? <laughs> I'm already here. Creepy pasta! I want to go home. Don't say it. I'm gonna say it. Don't! But I wanna! Orange, you know the moment you say it, he's gonna pop out of the shadows or something. So don't say it! Don't say what? The word creepy pasta. Cause the moment we say it. Did someone say creepy pasta? <laughs> ah! Oh, it pleases me that you wish to hear another of my world famous creepy pastas. We actually don't. We just said My that latest creation is entitled Spider Cat. <laughs> cool, cool! Is Spider-Man in it? Is Captain America in it? I'm afraid we couldn't afford them. But there is a hat. You like hats, don't you? Um, I guess. Of course you do. Now then, where was I? <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a young pair who was obsessed with fashion. When he heard about a new hat shop in town, Speederman's Hat Shop read the sign out front. The pair could tell it was a fancy establishment because of all the extra letters in the word shop. Excited, he rushed inside and was greeted with shelves and shelves of every type of hat he could possibly imagine. And even some he couldn't. Across the store, the purveyor of the shop, Mr. Speederman, spied the young pair perusing the rare hat section. Mr. Speederman asked the young pair if he was interested in seeing the most expensive hat in the store. Intrigued, the pair's eyes widened as Mr. Speederman produced a beautiful black and red box with what appeared to be air holes punched in the top. The pair was perplexed, but his hesitance quickly turned to excitement as the shopkeeper explained that the hat within was all the rage in Paris and Milan. The young pair could not wait to try on the hat within until the lid was open and he saw what was inside. A gigantic, living, breathing spider. Now the young pair was beyond confused. This spider was a hat? Mr. Speederman explained that yes, the spider cap was the most cutting edge hat wear money could buy. The pair looked around the store to find a number of particularly fashionable patrons wearing spider caps as well. Fearing he might miss out on a smashing new trend, the young pair quickly handed over the considerable sum, signed a contract of some sort, then proudly placed his brand new spider cap upon his head. At which point, it plunged its fangs deep into the pair's head. The shopkeeper assured the pair that this was all perfectly normal. This way, the spider cap wouldn't blow away in the wind. The pair looked around, and sure enough, the other spider caps were secured in their owner's heads the same way. Soon, pair began to feel strange. He felt a slight itch on his back, and so he scratched it. And at that moment, he realized he was scratching his own back. This, of course, was surprising to him because he had no limbs. He rushed to a mirror only to discover that he had sprouted a long, hairy spider leg out of his body. Then another, and another. As Pear gazed into the mirror, he saw that he no longer had two eyes. He was growing additional eyes by the second. He again asked the shopkeeper if this was typical. The shopkeeper replied yes. Everything happening to the young bear was covered in the contract he had signed. The young bear opened his mouth to reply, but his tongue was gone. It had become mandibles. Bear darted for the door, trying to escape, but the shopkeeper was too fast. Mr. Speederman quickly and expertly trapped the young bear, or should I say, the young spider, inside a familiar looking red and black box with air holes punched in the lid. Outside the box, he could hear voices. A new customer had just walked into the shop and was asking to purchase a new spider cap. Ah! Well, that was a good 
one, creepy pasta? Yeah, you should definitely post it to the World Wide Web. <laughs> uh. That story really freaked me out. Just the thought of turning into a spider and, wait, where's Pear? Who cares? He was boring anyway. Hmm, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> 17 bottles of pop on the wall, 17 bottles of pop. Take one down, pass it around. Oh no, I just lost count. Where was I? I don't know, dude. I've been trying to zone you out for 20 minutes. Oh well, I'll just start over. 999 bottles of pop on the wall, 999 bottles. <laughs> Seriously, where are our friends? They've been gone way too long. Maybe it's a normal length of time and it just seems long to someone your size. <laughs> hey, creepy pasta! You rang. <laughs> Ever since you started telling us stories around the campfire, our friends have been disappearing. What's going on? Yeah, where's Grapefruit? Where's my sister? And where's my best friend? I'm not your best friend. See? Pear's talking from inside a fire or something. That's not normal, and we want answers now. All right, all right, you caught me. My newest creepypasta will explain everything. What? Just tell us. It's entitled, Ronald McDonald Face. Ooh, let's hear him out, little apple. This one sounds really good, and I'm not clowning around. <laughs> oh, it's good, all right. I believe the two of you will. Love it to death. <laughs> um. Now then, once upon a time, there were two friends, a young orange and a young, outrageously tiny apple. Not necessary, dude! One day, the two friends learned that McDonald's was planning to offer some healthier options on its menu. Orange juice with its breakfasts, and apple slices with its Happy Meals. This, of course, worried them slightly, as they were both now on the menu, so to speak. But they decided to have fun with it. The two friends started pranking each other by placing pictures of Ronald McDonald's face in surprising locations for the other to find. Inside the refrigerator, under the toilet lid, on the ceiling above the other's bed, the prank, which they called Ronald McDonald Face, was all in good fun. At first, because after the diminutive apple got Ronald McDonald faced by a picture taped to the bottom of a table. Wait, 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 wait. I think you mean top of a table. No, I mean bottom. I'm telling you, this apple was very short. <laughs> Offended that the table prank had cashed in on his shortness, the apple decided to escalate the prank war. Soon, the friends were hiding wall-sized pictures of Ronald McDonald's face. Any window they opened, any closet door, any light switch they flipped was liable to terrify the living heck out of them. The two friends began to live in fear, terrified that the next Ronald McDonald face might be just around any corner. Behind any door, they even began to dream about Ronald McDonald face. After weeks of sleepless nights, they called a truce, but that didn't stop the Ronald McDonald faces. Still, they appeared at home, at work, at school, in the bathroom, in the night. The Ronald McDonald faces were bigger and scarier and more surprising than ever before. And what's more, Ronald McDonald's expression was growing more sinister with each and every appearance. His eyes began glowing red, and he began to wield knives with astonishing frequency. The orange and the apple both swore they were honoring the truce, which could only mean one thing. The newer, scarier Ronald McDonald faces were appearing all by themselves. Just as they came to the horrifying realization, a gigantic Ronald McDonald face burst through the wall and swung a knife down upon them. Instantly, the two friends awoke in their beds, having just had the exact same nightmare. They were relieved to find no knife marks on their bodies. It seemed they were safe from Ronald McDonald face, at least for now. That is, until one day, McDonald's announced a new menu item. This was a hamburger, but it was no ordinary burger. 
You see, this burger had some very curious ingredients included in it. Ingredients you'd never think belonged in a burger. That's right. On top of the patty and lettuce and special sauce, this burger contained... PASTA! What? No. The ingredients were... PASTA! What are you talking about? Who would ever put pasta on a burger? I don't know. You said the secret ingredient was weird. And what's weirder than pasta on a burger? Well, I suppose that's true, but... So pasta was on the burger, and then Ronald McDonald face no! burst in and ate the burger! <laughs> the end! <laughs> Whoa! Hey, friends! Where have you been? You wouldn't believe us if we told you, but it was Chattanooga, Tennessee. Where's creepy pasta? I'd like to have a few words with that guy. Don't worry, I'm with you always. <laughs> okay, so that might have been a mistake. Not only because it's too dark, but also because Orange is inevitably going to say the line... Hey, who turned out the lights? <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, found my flashlight. It's all going to be okay. Just got to switch it on and... Ah!